Chapter 14 Introduction Quote, Passion is energy. Feel the power that comes from focusing on what excites you. Unquote. Oprah Winfrey Of the sections of this book, passion is either the easiest or the hardest. It's the easiest if it's crystal clear what your passion is. It's also fairly easy if you have no idea, because you can figure it out. It's the hardest if you think you know, but you're doubting. Either way, it's terribly important. Vitally important. Think of the solar system. If you were to send an unmanned rocket to Jupiter, you'd set the coordinates just so, calculating distance and speed of the rotation of the Earth and whatnot. But if you got the trajectory just a little bit wrong, you might end up on Mars. Bit of a problem for the rocket. Thankfully, what you're doing is less scientific, but no less important. If your dream is to become a pianist, after a year, you decide that it was actually truly and deep down that you wanted to become a hedge fund manager, it's probably not too late. Or you'd like to lose a little weight. You want to stop biting your nails. Stop drinking. Take up Cavendoli macrame. I know a guy. Quit your job. Keep your job. Write a book. Compose music. You get the idea. More important than trajectory is liftoff. You just need to get started. It's honestly as simple as that. I think I experienced both the good news and the bad news of passion at the same time. I knew exactly what my dream was, yet at the same time, I didn't pursue it. Like that darling tapeworm mentioned previously, it ate me up for years, decades even. How come if I knew my dream, I knew what my passion was, that I didn't act on it? Oops, did we skip the chapters on procrastination? Procrastination knows no end. Passion can also sit and fester, together with procrastination. In fact, I bet they're big pals. I think they hang out inside of your head and laugh at how we think it's one or the other, and they continue laughing together knowing it's a combination of both of them. If you're still a little on the fence about what exactly it means, passion, we can fix that. If you say that you don't know what yours is, I understand. But if you say that you have no big dream that you are passionate about, then I believe you less. I believe that we are all born with dreams and passions and imaginations and creativity, but that our external world gnaws at them, grinds them down, and can even bury them so deep that we have trouble finding them, or even believing that we have them. If you're struggling to find your passion, think about what gives you energy. What do you do that you seem to do effortlessly? What makes time fly? What do you look forward to doing more of as soon as you've finished doing it? What makes you smile? What makes you raise your hand to volunteer for? What gives you goosebumps? Please note, if this wasn't clear yet, this book is not Find Your Passion and Make a Million Dollars. You'll see by part six that there are things ultimately more important and fun and rewarding than financial gain. Sure, chances are good that it'll happen, but it's more of a side effect than a result. The passion I'm after goes deeper. I'm much more interested in you finding your joy, your happiness, your worth, your value, your freedom, your peace, your addition to the world. I don't believe that you'll do that by doing something you don't love. Sure, it's possible, but why bother? Yes, to pay the bills, I get that part. Important too, but this is beyond bills. Here's a test. Go talk to someone over the age of 80. Ask them what passion is. Ask them what they regretted that they never did or didn't do enough of. What were they happy they did? What are their memories about? What makes them happy now that made them happy then? If they don't answer, ask them again. 
It's there. You might have to dig a little. If you can't find your answer with them, or at least a better definition of what passion means for you, imagine yourself beyond 80 years old. You're sitting on a porch overlooking a lake, a glass of iced tea in your hand. You have a few minutes to yourself, and you have a quick glance back over your life. You think about some of the things that you did that made you most proud. The things that, at 80 plus years old on that porch, still bring a tear to your eye and a shiver down your spine. The hair on your neck stand up, and a smile that you can't deny. You might get choked up because you're so emotional that you can't talk about it. But you will talk about it because it's who you became, or didn't become. It's not just what you did, it's who you were, or hopefully who you are even at 80 plus. What you choose to do or not to do today is possibly that first step to the hairs standing up on your neck when you're on that porch with the iced tea. That's what I'm after, but I am after it today, not when I'm 80 today. Possible. Love. Impossible. Hate. Repossible. Passion.